for Oasis Audio. I'm Wayne Shepard talking with Jackie and Kevin Freiberg, the authors of Nanovation and other best-selling books. Kevin and Jackie are also well-known as speakers and business consultants who address topics like leadership and innovation and culture aimed at helping companies and the people within those companies do their very best. So, Kevin and Jackie, thanks for stopping whatever else you're doing today to talk to us about Nanovation. Our pleasure. Great to be with you. Uh, Before we talk about the book, though, help us to get to know you and what you do. Now, Kevin, let's do it this way. Why don't you introduce us to Jackie and tell us everything we need to know about her? (laughs) Well, I'll tell you what. uh, You know, the the, the old cliche of uh, you're successful because you marry way above yourself (laughs) plays out in our relationship. Uh, That's absolutely true, Uh, both in terms of... uh, Jackie being the anchor of our family, but also in terms of being just uh, a great business partner. We've been business partners for 20 years, and and we're still married. <laughs> so uh, we consider that to be a success. But it's been a it's been a great compliment. Uh, how do you say it? Complimentary relationship because uh, Jackie brings so much to the table in terms of her ability to see things and connect dots that. Uh, that I just don't, and so it makes for a great uh, writing partnership as well as um, consulting partnership. Jackie is uh, a diehard workout nut. The rest of our family just sprints to keep her in our eyesight, <laughs> keep her over the horizon. We all feel like if we can, if we can just keep a bead on her, we'll all stay in pretty good shape too. Uh, uh, all right, Jackie, it's your turn about Kevin. I understand he's a pretty competitive guy, huh? He's super competitive. Um, You know, one of the things that I love to say about leaders is I love to say great leaders are people who know themselves, who constantly grow themselves, and then who draw others up. And I would say Kevin is a guy who knows himself really well and is always searching for, you know, interesting new insights that help him, you know, get better, get better, stronger, you know, bigger, bolder. Uh, The other thing is I think great leaders know themselves um, and and stretch themselves and then draw others up. And you can't draw others up unless you absolutely know yourself and you grow yourself. And he's a guy who anybody who's around him, he will cause you, inspire you to want to get to know yourself better, want to grow yourself, and want to become bigger and better. And I think that's what he's always done for me and for our family and for every client that we work with. So all these lessons you guys pass on to the rest of us, they start at home for you too, Jackie? They have to start at home because I don't think you can translate or transfer or offer anything to others unless you look in the mirror first. And I would say that's really what we've been on together and in all the work we do. It's a journey to to fully become uh, or to become full, rich, big leaders. Hmm. And we do that with each other. We do that with our children. Um, we do that with our friends, even though they don't like it. <laughs> the good news is, is when we get to do it with clients, yeah. you know, they're asking for it. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on, huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, Kevin, where does all this passion come from? And when did you two first start to realize, hey, we could do this together? Well, I think it. I, I think there's a teacher in both of us. Uh, you know, I, I. You know, I think it, it's so easy to say one of the greatest needs of human existence is to to be loved and to be accepted, and we would certainly say that's paramount. But I think right there in line with that, uh, one of the greatest needs that we all have is the need to influence, Uh, you know, hopefully in a positive way. And I think that's deeply, uh, that chip has been planted deeply in both Jackie and I. So uh, that's where the passion comes from. And uh, in terms of working together, Jackie was uh, really running all of the extended training programs for the University of San Diego when we just happened upon uh, the Nuts book after writing two doctoral dissertations. And she was in the field, but from a different angle. And, you know, we got so busy here that we just said, look, it's time for us to do this together. Let's take a shot at it. And we just have never turned back since. Yeah, for those who don't know about the Nuts book, as you call it, uh, boy, it's a classic. It really is a bestseller. Nuts, Southwest Airlines' crazy recipe for business and personal success. And I, I heartily recommend that book as well as Nanovation. Uh, what is your, Jackie, let me ask you, what is the basic message that you guys impart to, to companies and to people within those companies? Oh, great question. I, I think we have been on a journey, and we are as Kevin just described a few moments ago, really passionate about writing about, 
speaking about and um, researching best places to work where the best people can do their best work to ultimately create a better world. And we were really fortunate because we started with one of the best stories of that of all time, and that's Southwest Airlines. <laughs> and then what happened with that book is people said, this is a fascinating story. This is very descriptive of what I just talked about, best, 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 better. But what happens if we're not in the airline industry? What happens if we don't have a leader like Herb Kelleher? You know, what happens if we didn't start that way? Then we wrote a second book about not one company, but probably 15 to 20 different companies that are recognized as being best places that ultimately make the world better. And then people said, well, gosh, you know, that's a great story too, but, you know, what if, what if we don't have that kind of culture? What if we don't have those kinds of leaders? That's when we wrote a third book, and it was less about the company and the leader and more about really equipping people with seven timeless choices that will inspire them to step up and become the best they can be as individuals. In other words, become accountable to the success you want to create in life. And that, you know, that was our third book. And then ultimately we got to come full circle and write another book like Nuts about not just a, not a, not a U.S. company, but a global company that is totally <laughs> making the world better with this little nano. Yeah, I want to get to that in a moment. Kevin, you, you must travel the world, though, to find these stories, huh? Yeah, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's a great point on your part because we make our living telling stories and we have our impact uh, in terms of what we want to do to change the world by telling stories. So you have to be pretty judicious, uh, you know, the the... The grid is pretty tight in terms of trying to sift out a great story. But then you have to learn to apply the story, and that's what you guys do so well, is you take these stories and you extract all the lessons from them for the rest of us. Yeah, and I think that just comes back to where you were a few minutes ago in, in terms of what makes us passionate. I think, you know, you, you, you just hope that when you lift up the covers on a really great company and you start to learn, you you, you hope that what you learn uh, will will turn others on as well. I, I also think that, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, studying companies and learning about other organizations, best practices is sort of passe. But I actually think um, that's not true. I think the way that we get to really incredible innovations is studying and really dissecting best practices of other organizations and other leaders. Because once we understand what other companies and other leaders are doing, then we can take the best of the best and put our own thumbprint on it and create something even more innovative and more, um, you know, more fabulous than ever before. And I think that's what the Nanovation story is truly all about. <laughs> yeah, as I read this book, I, I kept saying to myself, I didn't know that, and yeah. I didn't know that, and I didn't yeah. know that. And it yeah. starts with this, this little car itself that, uh, well, it's a story from India. T uh, tell us just basically the storyline of this company. Well, uh, Ratan Tata is the um, venerable chairman of the Tata Group, which is a uh, 93 it changes from day to day, but I think but 93 operating companies, $78 billion conglomerate. And one of their flagship uh, companies is Tata Motors. And Rattan is just a wonderful guy. He's probably the biggest thinker that Jackie and I have ever met. Um, he was leaving uh, a meeting in Bangalore one night during the monsoons. That's their rainy season. And he saw, um, well, first he said to his driver, he said, please be careful tonight. It's going to be very slippery out there, and they got out into traffic. A scooter with a family of uh, four on the on the motor scooter, which is very typical of the way Indians travel. You see families of four, five, and six, no protection, no mm -hmm. helmet, no leathers, yeah. because that's all they can afford, and that's the way they travel. Uh, got out in front of them, and he again said to his driver, he said, please be careful, because uh, they could slip. Well, they got around two more bends, and they were in a busy intersection, and the bike went down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the mom went one way and the dad the other, and the kids were sprawled out all over the, the road. And it was everything they could do to kind of stop and not run over this family. And at that point, it was, I think it was really an epiphany for him that said, we as Indians have to be able to solve this problem. And so he started to conceptualize a what was called then a small car project. And the, the what if was, what if we could build 
a safe, affordable form of transportation for a little more than the price of that scooter and take that family out of the monsoons, out of the blistering heat, and, you know, make it comfortable and safe. Well, he went to the moped and the motorcycle manufacturers, went to the other car manufacturers in India, and he said, let's do this together. Let's build a coalition. Let's solve this problem together. And, of course, nobody wanted anything to do with it. (laughs) So they pursued it, and he was at the um, largest auto show uh, in the world, which is Geneva, and a Financial Times reporter from London came up and said, we understand, Mr. Tata, you're working on a small car project. And he said, yes. And he said, well, tell us about it. And he did. And they said, well, what will it sell for? He said, I'm not prepared to tell you that. We've, we've, you know, it's, <laughs> we don't know what materials cost are. We're just in the initial development of this. He said, well, one, one lakh rupees be about right, and which is 2,500 U.S. dollars. And uh, Mr. Tata said, yeah, it's in the ballpark. But again, I'm not prepared to put it, make a statement. Well, next morning, headline in the, in the Financial Times <laughs> read, Tata to produce one lock car. <laughs> and he said, at that point, I had a choice. I could go back and correct the headline, or I could take it to our engineers and say, we're going to build a one lock rupees car. And that's what they did. This is an amazing story, and I know you go into so much more level of detail in the book, of course, and innovation and all the lessons that we can learn from it. But, Jackie, do you have a favorite lesson from the story of the little nano, the little car that could? And, by the way, this is the company that also owns Jaguar and Land Rover, so this is no small company, right? Right. It's not a small company at all. It's actually it's actually a force to be reckoned with. I think the rest of the world, you know, whether you do business in India or not, whether you like doing business with India or not, it's a story that needs to be read. And I don't say that because we wrote it. I say that because this is the answer to your question. Um, we had an ongoing contract with the United States Marine Corps where we teach Marines how to give speeches. And one of the mottos that pervades the Corps is this. The difficult we do immediately. The impossible just takes us a little longer. (laughs) And, you know, that's what Rattan Tata inspired his team of really young engineers to do. Take a little bit of time. Study what you need to study. Do what you need to do. This isn't impossible. This can be done. And I think the lesson is, is anything that's important, this was important. This is saving lives. Rattan Tata said, let's Let's what if this to life. And if anyone wants a story um, that will inspire them to take what seems impossible and make it happen to improve the little corner of the world, I think this is a story that can help people achieve that. It's not about a car. The car happens to be the star of the story. I'm not a car girl. I like to drive nice cars, but you know what? I don't care that much about cars. I don't care that much about the design of cars, the manufacturing of cars. What I care about is equipping people with tools that will help them accomplish big things. Wayne, I think it's important uh, for, for the listeners to know uh, India has a billion people, and uh, every year uh, 100,000 people die in India in auto-related accidents most of which are on two-wheelers. So what attracted us to this story uh, wasn't just the ingenuity and the innovation. It was the fact that here is a a leader, um, a global leader, who wanted to make a profit while making a difference. Because if they can, I mean, imagine this, if they can just put a dent in 10% of the people in every third world country around the globe that travel on these scooters like we just described and put them in a safer uh, form of transportation, imagine what that can do for the world. Yeah. Well, as people listen to this audio book, they're going to hear dozens of lessons that you draw from this story of the Nano, this little car in India, and it's an amazing story, as I've said. But what do you make of the fact that this story is coming to us from a place outside of our sphere of influence, you know, America, where all the innovation rests solely in this country, some believe. Uh, what do you make of the fact that this story comes from a place like India? Well, I'll tell you, um, I'll tell you a, a, a short answer to that, and Kevin will probably add to it. But, you know, I think um, the Indian people, uh, especially if you're in the United States and, you know, you don't do a lot of business with India, and pr- primarily your experience has probably been calling a 1-800 number and you get a call center. That experience can be frustrating. 
And so you have in your mind, you know, they're taking our, our, our work away, you know, they're difficult because it's, the translation is tough, it's delayed, it's, you know, you can go through your litany of, of frustrations. But, we, you know, when I went to India and, and met with the Indian people, they are smarter than smart. <laughs> they are intelligent beyond intelligent, and they have a drive and a passion to succeed. So I think we could learn from their story. Any part of the world can learn from their story and just see the drive and the passion and the willingness to take a what-if idea and bring it to life so that, um, you know, it, it's, again, a best practice uh, that people can learn from and borrow from. And, Wayne, I would add to that. I would just say we better pay attention to what's going on in India and China and other parts of the world because if you think about this, uh, I, I don't have the specific statistics, but I heard just recently that they have more kids graduating from their top technology schools in India alone today than we have kids in this country. Says a lot, doesn't it? So you know, it just it's it's. I think it's naive for us. Not we are, whether we like it or not. And believe me, Jackie and I are patriots. Uh, we'd like to bring jobs back here. We are. We feel the pain of, of many of our clients who've let people go and friends who don't have jobs today. So uh, believe me, we're, <laughs> we want to do what we can to stimulate jobs in, in this country. But the fact is we are a, a global universe today, and, and that's just the way it is. And I think we're naive not to pay attention to some of these huge success stories that are happening in other parts of the world. We're hungry for success stories, aren't we? We, yeah. we, we need models like this man. Absolutely. And, you know, our clients are telling us, our, our national, our U.S.-based clients, are very, very interested in this global story because they want to know if they're not, if they're not traveling globally, we have to find a way to get our hands on those stories in a very detailed way. Hmm. Now, you said this isn't a book about cars. It happens to center on a company that makes cars, among other things. But is this book then a general business book? Who, would, who should read this book or listen to this book? I think, it's a, I think this is a book for any business leader that wants to expand their capacity to innovate. I think it's for any leader at, at any level of a, of a company that wants to unleash creativity in their culture, that wants to make ingenuity uh, a part of their cultural DNA. Uh, we have, you know, we we could have made it uh, 15 or 20 rules, but uh, the three of us got together and said, that ah, just isn't going to work. So we tried to boil it down to be more simple. But there's eight rules of innovation in this that I, we think are a really great place to start if you are uh, a company or an individual that wants to expand your your capacity to break the rules and, and create breakthrough kind of changes. And uh, uh, that's well, what it's about. I'm going to add to that, too, Wayne. Thanks for even asking the question. Um, you know, I think if you go back to our readership from the Nuts book, and even as late as our Boom book, we find that, you know, certainly our target market is business leaders. But I also think that anybody who's in – in, in a position, whether they're a stay-at-home mother who just really is about personal growth and stretching and equipping her family, or if it's a, it's a stay-at-home dad who wants to equip his family or a coach of a team, I mean, these are life-changing principles. You don't have to be running a business. You can be running a family. You can be running a team. You can be running something. These are principles that will help you get a grip on how to drive and fuel the success of yourself and your team or your family. Uh, I certainly agree with that as I read it. And I'll tell you who I was thinking of as I read it. I was thinking of the young person in that first-level entry job. Yeah. Thinking, boy, what am I going to be able to make a difference in this world? And then to read a book like this and to set your sights on something past just doing the widget thing that you're doing in front of you. Well, that, that's who uh, I thought of. Well, I'll tell you what happened is we gave this book to a group of college kids who are into designing motion graphics, major social media kids. Um, they're being trained to be entrepreneurs who use social media to have a positive impact on the world. They took this Nanovation book and created a motion graphic that will be on YouTube soon that literally tells the Nanovation story through motion graphics. And they said it is by far their best piece of work, and they love the book because of it. Cool. I can't yeah. wait to see that. 
Wayne, if we, if we have time, I think there's just one other sort of interesting application of, of a book like this. Uh, we have a friend that uh, manages the San Francisco Giants, and uh, he's been a manager for 15 years now in baseball, and he's really known for doing a lot with less, you know, n never having the biggest payrolls, uh, maybe not having, you know, totally the greatest talent, but, but just leveraging the talent that he, that he has. And, of course, they won a world championship this year, but what he would tell you is that uh, it was a band of misfits. It was a, <laughs> it was a, a you know, a group of, he called them the Dirty Dozen, that came together and and I think what makes him such a a great leader is that he's constantly thinking about innovation. You know, in a in a pretty traditional game, he's constantly thinking about ways to shake it up. And he would tell you that you know he borrowed from from the many discussions that we had about mm -hmm. this book. I love what you guys have done with Nanovation and your other books as well. Uh, you mentioned a third party. That's Dane Dunstan. Yes. A co-author of this book, so there are three of you who worked on this book. And what about the website? Where can we go for more information about you guys and and keep in touch with what you do even past this book? Well, if people want to get to uh, us directly, they can reach us at uh, www.frybergs.com, and then uh, we will also have a, a site up on the book uh, called Nanovation Book. Good. All right. That's Freiburgs with an S, F-R-E-I-B-E-R-G-S dot com or nanovationbook.com. Kevin and Jackie Freiburg, thank you for your time. Thank you for what you're doing to help us all think innovatively. Thank you, Wayne. Great talking to you. For Oasis Audio, I'm Wayne Shepard.